It is not easy, amen, to share on this topic, amen. Because in order to talk about the anointing, you have to be familiar Woo! with the anointing. Come on, get it. And, uh, you know, I'm no expert, amen, but I've been hanging around the anointing for a few years, amen, for, oh, come on, somebody. for a long time, amen. I lose count sometimes, amen. It'll be 19 years, amen, that I've been hanging around the anointing, amen. amen. And uh, the anointing has been good to me, amen. And so I want to share tonight about the anointing. Uh, in the afterglow, we're going to have the anointing line. But uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. When you're there, say amen. Amen. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil. Because God was with him. Because God was with him. Let me, by your divine Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you, God. Teach us about the anointing tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In a second while I record this. You know, a lot of the, all the messages we uh, preach are a greater anointing. Amen. 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 There's a third wave taking place in Victory Outreach International. That's right. The first wave were the pioneers. Yeah. Our founders. Yes. Right there. Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie. Right there. Yeah. And the elders. Yeah. Our, our founding fathers of this ministry. That was the first wave. Right yes. Amen. Amen. Then there came, they, they, see, they, that first wave started the ministry. They pioneered right. the ministry. Right. 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 Yeah. They started from nothing. There was no other models of, of victory outreach. There was no other models of, of recovery home for men or women. Come on. There was no other models. There were, now today there's other recovery homes that are not victory outreach. But back then, there was no such thing. Come on. All right. Talk then. about it. There were no other models. You had Team Challenge, but Team Challenge wasn't set up like Victory Outreach. Yeah. Team Challenge was just a parachurch ministry. Yeah. There was, it was a place where the drug addict can come and, and get saved, but they weren't a part of a church. They would go to different churches. But God gave Pastor Sonny the vision to start a church for the drug addict and their families. Yeah. Yeah. And so part of that was to have the home and the church connected together. Yes. Right where the men and the women that came into the home could come feel a part of the church. But before, the church was mostly the home. Come on. True. And their families. Yes. Now, today, it's a little different. You know, you have a home and there's people that come to the church. But that was that first wave of revival. Yes. First wave of revival. They broke ground in Southern California, another California throughout the United States. But then a second wave came called the Joshua generation. Yeah. Amen. A second wave. And all of a sudden that second wave brought a fresh wind of revival. Yes. But now we're in a third wave season. Amen. 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 But the third wave is going to take a greater anointing. Come on now. Amen. Amen. It's going to take a greater anointing. See, the anointing of God is not just for you. It's for others. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and he went about doing good. All right, man. He went about doing good. Is there any people that go about doing good? <coughs> yeah. Yes. I know we used to go about doing bad. Come on. Huh? Come on. Good to your son. You remember. You remember. <laughs> We used to go around doing bad. Huh? We used to go around. That's why you being here tonight, you being here tonight, my car is a lot safer. Hello. Come on now. 
My radio is a lot safer. My house is a lot safer because you're here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Tell it. Huh? Expose it. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. Expose it. Right. Because we used to go around doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Breaking into cars. Committing burglaries. You remember. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Nobody's there. Nobody's there. Huh? Yeah. I, I don't want to give none of you ideas. Come on now. Flashbacks. We used to go around doing bad. Amen. Huh? But the anointing that God has placed on us is an anointing to go around doing good. Yes. Amen. Amen. Isn't that what Jesus did? That's right. Jesus went around doing is it? Ain't we called Christians? Yes. Right. Amen. So therefore, are we doing what Jesus did? Do we go around doing good? Huh? Not to earn our way to heaven, because you can't earn your way to heaven. Doing good is not gonna make you is not gonna is not gonna get you to heaven. Yeah. Only having Jesus in your heart yeah. is gonna get you to heaven. Only, right. only the blood of Jesus can get you into heaven. Yeah. But let me tell you something. When if you've experienced, if you've really experienced Jesus, then you then listen, you will you will experience his anointing upon your life, yeah. which is the Holy Spirit coming yeah. upon you. Yeah. And when you feel that Holy Spirit come right. upon yeah. you, then listen, you should go about doing what Jesus did. That's yeah. what and what did Jesus do? Jesus went around doing good. Amen. He didn't go around sappy, folks. Amen. <laughs> huh? He went around doing good. Yes. He went around doing good. You see. He went around doing good. Yeah. Went around doing good. Almost got us. Touch your mind. Went around doing good. Good to people. Yeah. Huh? Healing people. Blessing people. Praying for people. Amen. You wouldn't mind doing good. Because the anointing is not for you. That's right. Come on. The anointing is not. See, when you treat the anointing for you, you know what happens? Because let me tell you something about the anointing. The anointing is attractive. That's right. Yes. The anointing is attractive. This is why I look so good. <laughs> this is why you look so good. All right, yeah. come on. Yeah. Oh, just good to eat. Yeah. No, I'm convinced. <laughs> I'm convinced God don't make trash. I'm convinced God loves me. That's it. I'm convinced God spent some time on me. Come on now, God spent some time on you. Right. Huh? Let me tell you, the anointing is attractive. Yeah. Huh? The when, when the per when a person is wearing the anointing, huh? Watch out now. See, this is why before you you know before no girls would look at you. No girls would look at you. Huh? They wouldn't look at you. They wouldn't touch you with a ten foot pole. You broke, had no job, didn't brush your teeth. Teeth are yellow. They're, 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 you know, they're like, you know, the map was like corroding them. Oh, come on now. <laughs> huh? Expose it. the truth. Right? All of a sudden, you come into the home. You get saved. You come to the church. Hey. Huh? All of a sudden, you, you know, all of a sudden, you get saved and God delivers you from the map, from the crap. From the weed, you don't smell. No, no, no. You, 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 that weed don't yeah, smell good on you. No, 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 no. Huh? Right? And all of a sudden, now you're 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 wearing a suit in the house of God. You're, you're dressed nice in the house of God. You're lifting your hands in the house of God, and all of a sudden, Google eyes all over you. <laughs> huh? Come on now. The anointing. That's why Sean got married. <laughs> That's why Daisy, yeah, don't, don't, don't get mad. It's true. The anointing, Brother Sean. Yes. Favor. Right, Daisy? Just say it. Who can see? Who can see? 
He was up here singing like, like the tonsils of gold. Oh. <laughs> and Daisy was like, oh. <laughs> the anointing. <laughs> I never thought that brother was going to get married. Uh, well, I'll quit, I'll quit messing with you. Josh. <laughs> <laughs> the anointing. <laughs> you gotta have the anointing when you live with the men's home. <laughs> Not no more because now they got the women's home living with the <laughs> But he was there when it wasn't no women's home. Well, yeah, and he no didn't have no wife. Come on, come on. I used to go up into the men's home, I had to hold my nose. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you smell like the men's home, bro. <laughs> the anointing. <laughs> Where's your wife at? She should be here hearing this stuff. Right? Where you at? <laughs> that, she's busy. <laughs> the anointing. Me. Me. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? I, the anointing. I'm a heavy anointing. <laughs> Come on, somebody. The Lord said, I gotta get this brother some more. Huh? You know, but let me tell you something. If you don't handle the anointing right, mm. talk about it. If you don't handle the anointing right, huh? You will try to use the anointing to be a player player. Oh. And this goes for girls too. Come on, somebody. This goes for girls, too. Because, girls, you might have got guys, but you got all the wrong guys. Right. Oh. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me talk about it. All right. Well. You got the bad guys. Oh, no. They have mad, mad cow disease. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's like, why do all the guys that I get, come on, somebody. And don't, don't get offended, guys. Don't get offended, because I'm one, too. I don't know that guys all I get come from prison. <laughs> come on now. Come on. Huh? Come on. Preach. Huh? You you had a you had you had an anointing alright, an anointing. <laughs> <laughs> but then all of a sudden you get the anointing upon you and all of a sudden. Huh? You start to attract the right type of guy. Uh oh. The right type of guy. The anointing. But listen, that's with all that, let me tell you something. Amen. That's not the purpose for the anointing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not. Huh? The anointing is attractive. So that's what happens. But that's not the purpose for it. Amen. Come on, break it down. The purpose is to do good. Amen. Right. The anointing is not for you. It's not for you to get hitched. <laughs> Come on. It's not for you to get married or get with somebody. That's not what the anointing is for. So check your motive. Come on now. Yeah. Go after the anointing because you're going after God. That's right. See, it's been God's anointing upon the ministry of Victory Outreach that has taken us all over the world. Amen. It's the anointing that built this church. Amen. It's the anointing that's Amen. built this ministry. Amen. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 the King James Version, I believe, says, it says it's the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. See how, see how powerful that anointing is? Yeah. That it, it destroys, what about, it destroys yokes that are on people's necks? Come on. Come on. Yeah. Ooh. It's the anointing that destroys Ooh. the yoke. Amen. The yo a yoke. They would put a yoke on 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 the on the uh, animals that would plow the field to hitch them together, so they could plow that field all day. All right. And they were bound. They were yoked together. But many of us, we were yoked to our addiction. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. Yeah. We were yoked. Huh? We were yoked to meth. We were yoked to alcohol. We were Man. yoked to nicotine. We were yoked to lust. We were yoked to perversion. We were Man. yoked to per pornography. Man. Some still are yoked to that. 
It's only the anointing that would destroy. Some people are yoked to anger. Some people are yoked to bitterness. Unforgiveness. Depression. Poverty. Sadness. You're always sad. Some people are yoked to madness. They're always mad. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. Right. It's the anointing that destroyed that yoke upon your life. Amen. When you came and you gave your life to Jesus. Amen. It's the anointing that destroyed that yoke. That's why you're here. That's why you're sitting here in your right mind. Because the anointing has Amen. destroyed that yoke. Some of you still have that yoke, but it's the anointing that is destroying it. Right now, the anointing Amen. is going forth and it is destroying. It is chopping at the bit. It is destroying that madness. It is destroying that sadness. It is destroying that depression. It is destroying that addiction. It is destroying that poverty mentality. It is destroying that anger. It is destroying that jealousy. It is destroying that envy. It is the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. This is why I say it is the anointing that has built this church because you came in like this, but you don't suffer from that no longer. You're not a myth no longer. You're not mad no longer. You're not jealous no longer. You're not envious no longer because the anointing has been working upon your life. It's the anointing. See, God's anointing has been setting people free here. Yes, yes. See, this is why the anointing on our lives is so important. The anointing, tell your neighbor, the anointing on your life is important. The anointing on your life is important. Thank you, Jesus. We, we listen because we can do nothing without the anointing. Did it. Right. We can try, but we won't go far. <laughs> we can do nothing without the anointing. And if we try, we ain't going to get very far, my friend. We need anointed leaders, Amen. preachers, right. singers, Did it. musicians, Did it. teachers. Did it. Ushers, well, yes. altar workers, yeah, yeah. evangelists, Amen. missionaries, right. young people. Yeah. We need anointed people. Yeah. We need anointed young people. We need anointed leaders, anointed singers, yeah. anointed people. We need anointed people. Because if not, we won't get very far. Yeah. That's right. We won't get very far. We need anointed people. We need anointed leaders, anointed preachers, and we'll preach under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Woo! Come on now. That's right. That's right. Good. Under the uh. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Come on now. Huh? The uh of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. I don't ever want to preach without God's anointing. Woo! That's right. Come on now. Amen. Have I? I probably have. Come on. But I don't like it. I want to preach what God's anointing. Yes. The Holy Spirit and power. Amen. See, anointed people are three things. Fast. One, they're broken. Anointed people are three things. One, they're broken. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Anointed people are broken people. Pride is broken Amen. in their life. And they're humble. That's when you can tell an anointed man. He said, pride has been broken in his life. Amen. They walk around with humility. Amen. Humility. Humility doesn't, doesn't mean walking down with your head low. You know. Being a doormat for everybody to walk on. Amen. Jesus wasn't no doormat. Come on. Huh? Humility is knowing who you are in God. Yes. Humility is knowing who you are in Christ Jesus. That's what humility is. Humility is knowing who you are, and you're no more than that, and you're no less than that. 
Humility. See, see, a humble person is a broken person. A person that is anointed is somebody that has been broken. Their pride has been broken. I came in prideful. I came in a prideful man. I was, I was, I had, I had brown pride. Man. Wow. Like some of you had black pride, yeah. Yeah. white pride. I had brown pride. I had my neighborhood pride. Come on, yeah, man. come on. Oh, Clivy, guess. Yeah. <laughs> pride. Come on. And then from that, not only I, was, I, I even got my, I had my neighborhood pride. Yeah. My own Creekside, oh boy. Mm. I was pride. I was prideful from what I, where I was from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a gang member, especially gang members are real prideful. Mm -hmm. Come on. And then I became a drug dealer, uh -oh. and then the pride kicked in even higher. So all of a sudden I had gold around my neck, gold on my hands, and Jesus, <laughs> diamond pinky ring. Come on now, testify, huh? I was pride. My I walked around like I was, you know, I walked into the club like I was all that. I thought I was the Scarface of Oak Cliff, but I was really just the, you know. The, what do you call the car on Friday? <laughs> <laughs> Smoky. Smoky. Oh, Smoky from Oak Cliff. Come on now. Don't laugh. You got iron, you're on supply. Yeah. Rule number one, broke. <laughs> Big worm. And, and I, we had pride. I came in all prideful. I thought I knew it all. This is why I didn't, I didn't listen to mom. I didn't listen to that. I didn't listen to the PO. I didn't listen to the teacher. I didn't listen to the police. We didn't listen to nobody because we had pride. But God broke me. God broke me. See, sometimes God has to break that pride. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and, 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 he had, and you know, and breaking so, see, when, when something's broken in your life, it don't feel good, it don't sound good, it don't look good. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Right, Arturo, Arturo knows. He walked around with a broken leg for a long time. God healed him. Right. Yeah. Come here, walk up here. That's probably going to stay because God wants to always remind him. <laughs> but you remember how he was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Broken. Bo -bo. Come on, right? Yeah. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, you don't get offended, right? You know? Because it's true. But don't walk. Just walk that way. Right. <laughs> Speeding Gonzalez. <laughs> right? Yeah. Sometimes God has to break you. Yeah. Yes. You know what I learned? I learned to break myself before God has to break me. You know how you do that? Fasting. Giving. Break, break, just break the bank account. Just break it. Just break it. <laughs> Honey, I broke the bank account. <laughs> uh, right? I knew, I knew. See, you laugh at everything else. You don't laugh at this one. <laughs> you laugh, you don't laugh at that. That means you volunteer me to get my first juice. Come it's on, true. man. Come on, man. Yeah. It's real. It's true. That's real. I go, I go home. To, uh, Honey, I gave it all. You what? Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gave it all, honey. Gave it all. So see, sometimes, see, in order to stay broken, 
listen, I might, you know, God's going to break you either which way. Because there's some things you ain't going to muster up the strength to break. It's like when, when a bone gets broken. I remember that one Cowboys game. Did you see that one Cowboys game? Oh, yeah. Game? I'm not going to bring it up. But the one they won. Remember the one they won? The guy broke. Did you see his foot? Oh, yeah. You didn't see it. You got to go look on YouTube on the replays. I mean, that foot was just like. They showed it the first time. Huh? They they, it was like crazy. Yeah. But when they had him on the stretcher, it was back to normal. You know why? Because they had to break it back in place. Wow. Now, don't quote me, but it looked like that's what they did. And I'm sure that's what they did. You got to put it back in its place. It's like when you, you get a broken nose. Have you ever had a broken nose? Yeah. Yeah, the fighters, right? You got a broken nose, and it's like, right? Don't move. I got you. I'll help you. I'll help you. Okay? Just don't move, okay? Right? Broken nose. Break it. Broken. Broken. We come in broken. We come in broken, and then God, what does He do? He breaks us more. He breaks us more. Why? Because you know why? Because let me tell you something. The anointing can't come out of the olive. Olive. Unless it's crushed. Yeah, yeah, that's true. The anointing. This is, this is olive oil. We get anointing oil from olive oil. Well, where do you get that idea? From the Bible. Read it. I got time to look for it for you. <laughs> but it's olive oil. You want your own anointing oil? Go get some, buy some olive oil at Kroger's. Get you a fancy little bottle. Bring it to me. I'll pray for it. It's anointing oil. That's right. Amen. Amen. I believe every Christian should have anointing oil in their house. Yeah. But that anointing oil comes from the olive. Yeah. And the only way you get the oil out of the olive is if you crush. You gotta break the skin of that olive. And when you crush it, that oil begins to ooze out of it. And that's what God is doing when He's breaking you, He's crushing you. But what's coming out? Some ooze, the ooze is coming out, all that yucky stuff. All, you can see because when you're broken, all the impurities begin to come out. When you're broken, all that negativity, you begin to confess, you begin to cry, you begin to repent. God, forgive me for being negative. God, forgive me for being like this. I know you're dealing with me because I've been like this, God, and I deserve this. Is God. It is God squeezing all the impurities out because he's about to anoint your life because he wants to you. He wants to turn your mess into a message. He wants to turn your test into a testimony so you can declare to the world so you can tell somebody else how good God is, what God did for you, what God has to crush you, God has to break you. Look at Psalms 51. Are you learning anything? Yeah. Look at Psalms 51, starting in verse 10. What we read here is somebody that has been broken by God. Amen. Named King David. Psalms 51, verse 10. Verse 17. Amen. Created me a pure heart. Yes. Be careful what you pray for. But you got to pray for it anyways. Created me a pure heart. God says, okay. Oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Check it out. Do not cast me from your presence. If David is praying this, he must be praying it for a reason. Yeah, right. Amen. God, uh, uh, it's like you telling the bouncer, don't kick me out, don't kick me out. You must have done something to kick me out. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Yeah. yeah. That's what David is saying. Don't kick me out, don't kick me out. Well, what did you do to, for me to kick you out? He says, don't cast me from your presence. Amen. Or take your Holy Spirit from me. Right. Well, what are you doing? That I would have to take my Holy Spirit from you. Say, so you know what you did. 
Tell your neighbor, you know what you did. Look at verse 12. Restore to me, restore to me, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Why would he say restore unless it was taken? Huh? Restore to me the joy of your salvation. That means that he took his salvation back. That means there's no such thing as once saved, always saved. Come on now. And grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. What do we see? We see a broken David. We see a King David that's been broken by his sin, by his adultery, by his murder, by his lies, by his deceitfulness. By his trickery with Bathsheba. We see a broken David who, who son has been taken from him because of his sins. Yeah. I trip out when people blame God for their mess ups. Mm. Yeah. I ran into somebody yesterday like that. I ministered to them on the streets. And they said, well, well, you know, well, why God take my, my, my ex boo and, and well, when, whenever God answers that, then, I, then, then I'll talk. And I said, well, God didn't take your ex boo. And they, they took off walking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God didn't take your ex boo. What was your ex boo doing? Come on now. He didn't have him in the crack house. He didn't put that needle in his arm. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Don't blame God for our mistakes. That's right. And, and really, some, some, sometimes you can't even blame the devil. Ah. It's your doing. You got you in that mess. Come on now. Amen. We see a broken David. God, do not take, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Do not cast me from your presence. Do not let them keep me out of the church. We don't keep people out of the church. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, rowdy, you yeah, crazy. Come on, somebody. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Huh? There's order in the house of God. That's right, amen. amen. There's order in God's house. But it's like David's like this. God, no, no, he, he was broken. All right. He was a broken man. But check it out, check it out. Let's skip down to verse 17. Mm. Mm. There it is. My sacrifice, O oh God, mm -hmm. is a broken spirit. Amen. A broken and contrite heart. You, God, would not despise. A broken and a contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. Despise means shut away. Despise means look away. He says, accept my sacrifice of a broken heart. Of a broken heart. A broken heart. A broken heart, God, you will not despise. A broken heart, God, you will not turn away from. David was broken. And because he was broken, he became an anointed. He was an anointed king. He was an anointed king. We can do nothing without God's anointing. See, before God can use anyone greatly, he must wound them deeply. Before God can use you greatly, He must wound you deeply. I was listening to a message from Pastor Joe today, from Victor Arch Whittier. He was sharing his story about how God took his son, his 17-year-old son, when he died. His son was not, he was not a bad kid, he was a great kid, he was, grew up in the church, I mean, he was saved and all that. <clears throat> And he, and he tells the story how when his son was dying, he says he remembers telling God, God, if you do this, I will, not pre I will never preach again. I, 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 God, if you do this, I will, I will run from the calling of God. And he says God spoke to him. And he said, brace yourself like a man because I'm about, I'm about to put my finger through your heart. 
before God can use anybody greatly, he must be wounded deeply. He has wow. Oh, why, why God got to be Copeland? Why God be like that? There's a lot of reasons why. And there's a lot of reasons why I don't know why. There's a lot of reasons that, listen, there's some things, listen, there's some things that we will not know until we get to heaven. That's right. Amen. But you know what God showed him? God showed him this. God showed him, and he said, you know what, what ministered to him is that God showed him, listen, your son never drank, never smoked, never went, he never had to be drugged through the mud the way the devil drug you through the mud. Amen. And well, therefore your son is with you. And, and why would, did your son never experience that? Because you were an example. Because I saved you. I delivered you. I set you free. Amen. And because of that, your son never had to experience none of that. Amen. But yet, God is using him in a mighty way. He's an elder. That's right. Of the greatest ministry in the world. Amen. Amen. Huh? God was preparing him even for that day. And you know, I guarantee you that every time he shares that story, somebody gets ministered to. Yeah, that's right. A mom that lost her kid. A dad that lost his son. Come on, somebody. A sister that lost her. Come on, you ain't hearing me. Somebody gets ministered to whenever he shares that story. And they get encouraged and they say, well, Pastor Joe can serve God. And he lost a loved one. And he lost a son. And surely I can serve God. And I can be used of God. And I can, God can use me to be broken people. Yeah. See, broken is not just crying, but it's being open. Yeah. Broken is not just about crying mocos and tears and babas and <laughs> snot coming out of your mouth. And it's not just about that, but it's about being open. Amen. Being open to God. See, because somebody once said, when I'm broken, I'm open. You're never more open to God than when you're broken. This is why God had to break you. Because before, before you, because when you were on your high horse, you weren't paying attention to God. But when he knocked you off of your high horse and broke you, all of a sudden now you're open. Okay, God, I'll go to the home. Oh my, come on. Okay, I'll finally go to Victory Outreach. They've been telling me, they've been telling me for a whole year. They've been tagging me for a whole year. <laughs> come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tag now. Come on now. And all of a sudden now we're open because God has broken us. During this fast, God has been breaking me. God has been breaking me. Breaking my life. Breaking me. Not just through the, just physically, but he's been breaking. The first, I, I, I was, the first, uh, when we got on the fast, I got a little sick. Well, you know, New Year's, my voice went out. And then we got into the fast, and I was sick, but I fasted when I was kind of under the weather. And somebody once said, you can't fast while you're sick. It's giving God a lame sacrifice. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's kind of true, but... <laughs> I said, I'm going to fast anyways. Because <laughs> I've also heard, when you're sick, you're supposed to fast. Uh, fast the, uh, start the sickness. Mm, that's good. Is the motto. Start the sickness. Don't feed the sickness, starve it. Mm. Huh? Many times we're over there feeding the sickness. You know, we're over there sick. <laughs> Eating a big old double cheeseburger. You know? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Right. Whatever you feed will live. Whatever you starve will die. This is why a lot of doctors, a lot of doctors, they discovered with their patients, you know, fasting. Like, like Brother Don, I told him today when I was visiting, visiting with them, I said, boy, you want to force fast, ain't you? He's like, because they have a tube in his mouth, he can't eat. I said, well, praise God, amen. You join the fast with us. But 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 fasting has healing power. Yes. Yes. Has healing power. 
you know. And God was breaking me through that. And it was hard. It was hard to fast. You know, when I was like under the weather, I was like, man, I just, I need, just, I need something. Just give me a super song. I said, no, I'm going to fast. And God was breaking me. And then God's been breaking me. He's just been breaking me with just different things. Just breaking me, breaking me. Fasting is a good way to break yourself. Break away. Not only fasting, but praying. Pray more. Not just in the morning, but in the evening, during the day. Pray more often. And it begins to break you. It breaks you from your self-sufficiency. You begin to be broken before God. See, God breaks us in many ways. There's a few. He breaks us sometimes through sickness. He breaks us sometimes through a lack of. When we don't have it, when we're struggling. Mm, come on. Sometimes that's God breaking you. Don't get mad. It's just God breaking you. Sometimes we get mad when, we're, when we don't have money. We don't have nothing in the account. When we, they short us on the check. Well, I thought I was going to get, you know, I thought I have more hours than that. <laughs> Well, you know, we, we get mad. Sometimes it's God breaking you. That's right. Because when you have a fat check, oh, come on, Pastor. Oh, you're all happy. Huh? You're all happy when you got money in the bank. Cheddar. Dollars. Ducats. You're all happy. Huh? Come on, McDonald's on me, Jack in the Box on me. You're all happy. Go, go to the mall. Come on, you're all happy. Dollar, dollar movies, you're all happy. Huh? You're all happy. Oh, but when you lack. Huh? When you lack and you got to cook beans. Huh? All of a sudden, come on now. You, you start to go through it, man. You're looking at that like mad at the beans. Huh? Come on now. God, see, God breaks you sometimes when you don't have. God, it's, it, it, sometimes when you don't have it, it's, it's God breaking you. Amen. Let God break you. Amen. Sometimes God uses trials to break you. Yes. An unexpected thing just comes and hits you with a wham wham, just hits you out of nowhere. Amen. Have you ever something just come hit you out of nowhere? Amen. Amen. Huh? It just comes and hits you. It's just something just crazy, just like what, like you know. You know, James was right. Don't consider it pure joy, brothers, when you go through trials of many kinds. Yes. Right. Many kinds. Yeah, yeah. All kinds of trials. Like God. me, my God. Come on now. It's like the devil invents trials for Francisco. <laughs> sometimes, it, sometimes it's, 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 it's God breaks you, breaks you through your family. Oh, Amen. Amen. Talk about it. Sometimes God breaks you through your children. Amen. Huh? Through your sister, through your brother. Mm. Sometimes God breaks you. God will break you in the ministry. Yes. Mm. Don't run from it. Right. Don't get mad at it. Okay. Don't get angry at it. All right, man, good. But learn to embrace the breaking of God. Amen. Learn to embrace. I know it don't feel good. It's not supposed to feel good. <laughs> huh? Wait. Because it brings the anointing. Secondly, i got to move fastly. Surrendered. Surrendered. Well, the piano player can come up. What a, an anointed person has is not only brokenness, but surrenderance. They have given up their will for His will. Amen. Therefore, they're being willing for whatever God wants. Surrender. Surrender. A bro an anointed person is not only broken, but he's surrendered. They have given up their will for his will. Therefore, doing whatever God wants. Their agenda is God's agenda. Because they live a surrendered life. Their schedule is God's schedule. Because they live a surrendered life. Does God run your schedule? Or do you run your own schedule? You know, it's so easy for us to run our own schedule. 
I thank God that you're here tonight because it's showing me that God is creeping in on your schedule. He's creeping in on your schedule. Because now many of you have been coming on Fridays for a long time. You know why? Because you let God take care of your schedule on Friday night. Amen. But what about Saturday? What about Saturday morning, men? Come on now, amen. Men, gang warriors yes. are going to be here for the men's discipleship? Yes, amen, amen. Oh, no, no, I got something scheduled. Erase your schedule. Clear your schedule. That's right, amen. Because God. Because God. God wants to spend some time. God wants to spend more time with you. God wants to break you more. Amen. Sometimes you're broken through the word. The word just hits you, just, just bam, just like, oh, like, oh, man. Surrender. The third thing. Selected. Selected. An anointed person is selected. He's broken, he's surrendered, and then he's selected. Remember King David in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 through 13? When Samuel sent, when God sent Samuel, the prophet, to Jesse's house to anoint one of his sons. God told, God told Samuel, go to Jesse's house. You look it up, 1 Samuel chapter 16. He says, go to Jesse's house and anoint his son, one of his sons, to be the next king of Israel. Samuel goes to Jesse's house. Jesse has like, what, seven sons, I think? What, seven, eight sons he has? That's a lot of boys. <laughs> they to go to grocery shopping for them. <laughs> And David was the youngest. And so God, Samuel goes to Jesse's house. And he says, hey, uh, Jess, where are your boys at? Where are your kids at? Hey, bring, bring them here. One of them, God's going to anoint to be king. There's gonna be, I, God sent me here to anoint him to be king. So he brought his oldest boy. He brought his oldest boy. And he brought him. Surely this is the one. He says, bring all of them. Bring all of them. They all came. So he, he brought the oldest and then, and Samuel, he had what you call an, an, a, an anointing horn a, a horn, a horn full of oil. There it is right there. And Samuel would go, he would pass by each son as they were lined up, and he would put the horn over their head. Amen. And the concept was, or the thought was that if the horn would release the oil which was it was God actually releasing that oil upon that person then that would be the person that got called and that would be the person that got selected to be the next king of Israel so Jesse automatically thinking it has to be my firstborn he's the tallest he's the strongest he's the wisest it has to be him so he brought his firstborn and Samuel put the horn over him but the oil did not flow so he says, something's wrong. Do you have other sons? He's like, yeah, well, bring them, bring them, bring them here. So he brought the rest of his sons. It was, he brought five other of his boys because he was seven of them. He brought the other five. And, he, and, he, and he, one by one, he went over their head from the oldest to the youngest. But the oil never came out out of any of them. Right. And at the end, when he got to the end of the line, Samuel looked at Jesse again. He says, I know my God don't make no mistake. Do you have another kid somewhere that you ain't telling me about? Come on now. Kind of like the girls talk to ask the guys, do you have a kid that you're not telling me about? <laughs> right? And then, then, then the dad said, oh, you know what? Matter of fact, I do. The youngest. I didn't even bother to call him because he's taking care of my sheep. Wow. Come on. He's out of the sheep field. He's out there taking care of the sheep. He's out there being a shepherd. He's out there making sure they're not getting eaten by the lion and the bear. Samuel said, bring them. Bring them here. 
They went and caught David from the shepherd field and they brought him to stand before Samuel. Samuel lifted up the horn of oil over the head of the says, Put it up there, that last verse. Look into what it says in verse 17. Or verse 13. Over, yes, there it is, 13. It says, So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his Amen. brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. From that day, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David because the anointing began to flow. Because David was selected. He was selected. He was selected. I know that some of you are like, oh, that's a bummer. That's a bummer. Because I never got selected for anything. It's not a bummer. Because remember, David wasn't even thought about. His dad didn't even think about him. He was far from his mind. But it was God who selected him. I love this ministry so much. I love God. I love Victory Outreach. Amen. You know why? Because God selected us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, there's great ministries, man. There's great ministries all over the world. But God has selected us for the treasures out of darkness. God has selected us for the inner cities of the world. And you know what that means? That means God selected you. Amen. Out of everybody in your family, God chose you to hear the gospel. God Amen. chose you to open up your heart to Christ. God chose you to be saved. God chose you to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know what that means? That means you've been selected. Yes. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you been anointed with the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Then my friend, you've been selected. Amen. Have you felt the power of the Spirit of God? Amen. And my friend, you've been selected. Well, well I, don't, I don't know. I've never spoken in tongues. It don't matter. You bear the fruits of the Spirit. I see the fingerprints of God all over you. Amen. Amen. The fingerprints of God all over you, Maria. Where do they see? I don't want him to get mad at me. I see the fingerprints of God all over you. See, that couple has the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yes. I see the fruit of God all over you, Sister Laura. The fruit of the Spirit of kindness. Joy. 